God bless you today, for today is the day the Lord has made. And I'm going to read chapter 16 from the book of Acts, expository study Bible, so the notes included, King James Version. And as always, we ask God in the mighty name of Jesus to please bless us with the revelation of this word so we can grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ and crucified, and also that this word would be hid in our hearts. You know, you look at what's going on around the world and it's easy to be swept up in disbelief, sadness, anger of what's going on in this world. But that's us with our eyes off Jesus. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Instead of looking at the problem, stay on the solution. Believe me, I know it's easy to look off and to see what's going on, to see the sin. But all that's doing is making us feel things that we don't have to feel. Because when we keep our eyes on the solution, we'll have peace, <clears throat> we'll have joy, we'll have victory. So we just need to keep our eyes on the Lord. All right. Now, let me say this real quick. As bad as things are, and they are incredibly bad, things are only going to get worse because God said, when will I come back? No one knows but God. But he said, you will have an idea, the time frame, when it's the days of Noah again. The days of Noah. No one but uh, Noah and his family knew God, served God. No one else on the planet did. How many people were on the planet? God only knows. But every one of them was godless. You could imagine, but don't. But you could imagine the type of sin that was going on <clears throat> amongst the people. So the, the earth had to be destroyed. It had to be. That was mercy. And so once again, it will be like the days of Noah. And I would say this world is on a fast pace to that being the case. And you will know the days of Noah when all manner of sin is normalized. That's when you know you are living in the days of Noah and it's going to happen. All right. Then came he, Paul, to Derby and Lystra. The second missionary journey will have a greater effect on civilization than anything that has ever happened other than the first advent of Christ. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a, a Jewess and believed. It speaks of Timothy and his mother as being followers of Christ. But his father was a Greek. It seems he was not a believer which was well reported of by the brethren who were at Lystra in Ikenum. Timothy's consecration is obvious here. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, which was undoubtedly a leading of the spirit, and took the circumcised and, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in these those quarters. This was wisdom on Paul's part, which he felt led by the spirit to do. For they knew all that his father was a Greek. Paul would do all he could to appease people, but not at the expense of compromising the gospel. 
And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to, for to keep. They were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem, pertaining to copies of the decisions concerning the law of grace issue, which came out of the council at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in faith, Jesus Christ and them crucified, and increased in number and daily, means many, uh, many were being saved. Now when they had gone throughout uh, Pyrogi, in the region of Galatia, implies a time frame, probably several months, and were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. It refers to the area now known as northwestern Turkey. While the Holy Spirit definitely wanted the gospel to go to this area, there was another place he desired first. After they were coming to Myasia, um, they ass assessed um, to go into um, Bithynia, Represent an area east of the uh, Ephesus area, but the Spirit suffered them not, proclaims the door being closed to this area as well. And they passing by Messiah came down to Troas. This area would be closed for the time being also. So if you're wondering, doors closed, well, it's a spiritual world also. In the spiritual world, which God obviously controls, there are doors open and closed, meaning um, there's a season, there's times. God can do anything he wants at any time he wants. But yet, there's seasons, there's times he does things. What determines those seasons, those times? No one knows but God. And who are we to question him? So they wanted to spread the gospel at these places, but um, the door was closed. So God does what he does when he does it because he's God. He's perfect. He knows all things. And so whatever he does, you know, it's perfect. It's right. All right. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. Proclaims the Holy Spirit now telling the apostles exactly where he wanted him to go. There stood a man of Macedonia, uh, Macedonia the northern part of modern Greece, from the Adriatic to the he uh, Hebrus River, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Thus was ushered in the most mon monumentous event in the history of the world, the going forth of Paul to take the gospel to the nations of the West. And after he had seen the vision, immediately uh, we endeavored to go into Macedonia. By the use of the pronoun we, we know that Luke, the writer of this book of Acts, now joins Paul here at Troas, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. They knew they now had the mind of the Lord. Therefore, loosing from the Troas, we came into the straight course to Samothrakia, and the next day to Napoleus, this would be the very first presentation of the gospel on European soil, which would have such a bearing on what is presently referred as Western civilization. And from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of the part of Macedonia, Paul's destination and a colony was a colony of Rome, and we were in the city of abiding certain days, presents tremendous hardships, but a church was established here. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer uh, was wont to be made. Evidently meant there was no synagogue in the city. What few Jews were there uh, met by the riverside. And we sat down and spoke unto the woman which res resorted. Tither seems to tell us, uh, tell us that no men were present other than Paul and his party. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Tyridia, she, she was a businesswoman which worshipped God, proclaims her as a Gentile who had probably begun visiting a Jewish synagogue in Tyateria, heard of us. Paul evidently was asked to speak to these women, thus proclaiming the story of Jesus Christ and his redemption afforded by the cross of Calvary, whose heart the Lord opened, presents her hungry for God, that she attended unto these things which were spoken of Paul. She gave her heart to Christ and was thereby the first convert on European soil. 
in which she was baptized evidently took place some days later in her household, refers to the fact that all those with her accepted the Lord as well and were baptized. She besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide. There as well as her house is probably the first church on European soil. And she constrained us. Means they did not acquiesce at first, feeling perhaps that it may be an imposition on her, but she would not take no for an answer. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, it does not tell us exactly where this was, but does specify that it was a certain place, more than likely the home of Lydia, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of deviation met us. Speaks of the girl being demon-possessed, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, claiming to give advice and counsel from the spirit world, which brought quite a sum of money to her owners. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, Imply that this went on some time, possibly several days. <clears throat> These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Should have been translated a way of salvation, because that's the way it was in the original text. And this did she many days. For some reason, the Holy Spirit didn't give Paul latitude to pray for the girl until now. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, Address himself to the evil spirit and not directly to the girl. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he, the evil spirit, came out of the same hour. It means that the spirit came out instantly. <clears throat> and when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, meaning that the girl no longer functioned as she had previously done, they called Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. These men evidently had, had some sway with these rulers and brought them to the magistrates pertaining to Romans appointed by Rome. I'm saying these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. The manner in which the word Jews is used implies content and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe. A gross untruth. Actually, Judaism was legal religion in the Roman Empire, even though Paul and Silas were not actually teaching Judaism, but rather proclaiming Jesus. Still, the Romans would not have been able to distinguish the difference, being Romans, implying superiority. And the multitude rose up together against them, presents a stacked audience against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ran off their clothes, took off Paul and Silas' clothes at least to the waist, and commanded to beat them. Paul recalls this in 1 Theologians 2.2, 2, Scourging under Roman law was the most brutal and cruel punishment. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, the lictors were egged on by the mob, which the apostles being beaten almost to death. They cast them into prison. Prisons then were far worse than anything we can now imagine, charging the jailer to keep them safely. It contains the implication that Paul and Silas were desperados who having received such a charge means that he could punish them even more if he desired, which he did, thrust them into the inner prison reserved for the most violent of criminals and made their feet fast in the stocks. The legs were pulled wide apart and the individual laying on their back on the floor. After a short time, the muscles in the legs would begin to constrict, causing severe pain. Um, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, doesn't mean they began to pray at midnight, but rather they were still praying at midnight, having begun some time earlier, and sang praises unto God. Wait, 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 wait. So they were beaten to near death, yet they knew God. They were doing God's work, his will. Now they're in prison with the most violent of evil criminals, and they're chained up in such a way. And they are singing praises unto God. <laughs> do you, do you, do you do, this is, this is what happens when an individual is sold out to God. When an individual is sold out to God, nothing that happens can make you not sing the praises of God. Paul was sold out, no doubt about it. And so was Silas. So this is what being sold out will get you. No matter the circumstances, praises to God will be coming out of your mouth. 
no matter what. I mean, this is why this is why Paul was chosen to be given the gospel, which is Christ and him crucified, and to give it to the world. Um, all right. And sang praises unto God. The Greek text suggests that the burst of song broke out from time to time as they prayed. Their song was probably one of the psalms, and the prisoners heard them. It means they prayed and sang so loud that the other prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. This was no ordinary earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. It presents the Lord as the instigator of this upheaval and not a normal force of nature. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. This implies no normal earthquake, but rather something supernatural. And the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open automatically caused him to assume that all the prisoners had fled. He drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled, meaning that under the penalty of death, he was, de he was uh, re responsible for the prisoners. But Paul cried out with a loud voice. Paul sees what the jailer is about to do himself saying, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Tells us that the, none of the prisoners, ever how many there were, took the opportunity to escape. This also tells us that it's quite possible some, if not all, had given their hearts to the Lord. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling. Proclaimed that something powerful was happening to this man over and above the shock of the earthquake and in thoughts of suicide. And fell down before Paul and Silas. The jailer treated Paul with, with, uh, with great bru uh, br brutality, but Paul treated him with great humanity and brought them out, brought Paul and Silas out of prison and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This presents terminology that shows some familiarity with the gospel. Quite possibly before the arrest of the apostle, the jailer heard, heard him preach. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That's all. You know, the faith is, is, is presented. You choose to accept. You don't got to climb a mountain. You don't got to go through a program. You don't got to hurt yourself. Um, you don't got to um, um, clean yourself up. No, this is, this is a faith thing, not a works thing. Grace, not law. Presents the most beautiful explanation of salvation that could ever be given in your house. It means that salvation is not limited merely to the jailer, but is available to the entirety of his family as well. That is, if they will meet the conditions of faith in Christ required of them. And they spoke unto him the word of the Lord, pertaining to a, flesh, a fleshing out of the answer given in the previous verse, explaining what believing in Christ really meant. But to all that were in his house, Presents a service being conducted sometime after midnight, which resulted in all of his family giving their hearts to Christ. What a beautiful night it turned out to be. And he, the jailer, took them, Paul and Silas, on the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. Speaks of the terrible beating they had suffered a short time before and was baptized, he and all his, straightway immediately. And when he had brought them in his house, he set meat before them. Proclaims as obvious a meal prepared for them, and rejoice, believing in God and all his house. A night of misery turned to a night of great joy, a joy which will last forever for this jailer and his family. And when it was day, the magistrate sent to surgeons, prior first to the same men who had administered the beating to Paul and Silas, saying, Let those men go. The Codex Beza says that the magistrates came into the court that morning, feeling that their treatment of Paul and Silas had brought on an earthquake. Um, they were right. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent to let you go, now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans. Presents a scenario which puts an entirely different complexion on the matter. It was against Roman law for Romans to be beaten. So in beating them, the magistrates have broken the law, evidently not realizing they were Romans and have cast us into prison, and now do they thrust out to privily. They were treated as common criminals. No verily, but let them come themselves to fetch us out. And this way the city of the Philippi would know that the charges were false. 
and the surgeons told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. If Paul and Silas so desired, they could have brought charges against those in, these individuals, which could have resulted in severe consequences. And they came and besought them and brought them out, refers to the fact that the magistrates now came to Paul and Silas and desired them to depart out of the city, as reference to the fact that they were pleading with the apostles not to bring charges against them, but rather depart in peace. And they went out of prison and entered into the house of Lydia. They were somewhat the worse for wear in the physical sense, but greatly encouraged in the spiritual sense. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. These were these were new converts in the uh, Philippian ch church. All right, chapter 16 from the book of Acts. And, um, you know, God wants us sold out to him. And there's a reason for it. Because if we are, no matter the circumstances, no matter the test, trial, or tribulation, we can, sit, we, we can be singing praises to God and be tremendously blessed for it. You know, God doesn't call us to be spared from things. Jesus had to suffer things. So we are not greater than Jesus. So we're not called to be spared from things. Our life as a believer will always have tests, trials, and tribulation. But if we have our faith correct, if we are sold out, no matter what comes, they will be a comp it will be met with, 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 with songs of praises to God. Now that can't be done in the flesh. This can only be accomplished in the spirit. This is a spiritual thing. This isn't a flesh thing. This isn't a mental thing. This is a spiritual thing. When dealing with God, it's always in the spirit. It's a spiritual thing. Your soul deals with spiritual things. So that's how it's possible. All right. God bless you.